salt is good. But if the salt have lost his saltness, wherewith will you season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. Turn over to Luke 14. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Luke 14, 34, and 35. Salt is good. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land, nor yet for the dunghill. But men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Just these few words. Ye are the salt of the earth. I spent three years in the United States Navy. I was a boilermaker below decks in the fire room. And all the energy that was lost through sweat, we had salt pills. And salt pills were taken. Some of you men know what I'm talking about that work. But now we're living in a day when they've taken salt out of our diet. And Jesus uses this expression, talking to his disciples, ye are the salt of the earth. I had a boatswain's mate say to someone, you're not worth your salt. You ever hear that expression? Salt was more indispensable to the Hebrew than to us. They used it as an antidote to the effect of the heat of the climate on animal food. And it also was used in the sacrifices. They had an inexhaustible and ready supply of it on the southern shores of the Salt Sea, now called the Dead Sea. Salt symbolized hospitality, durability, and purity. To eat the salt of the king was to owe him the utmost fidelity. To eat bread and salt together was to make an unbreakable league of friendship. Salt meant something in those days. And that expression that Jesus used, ye are the salt of the earth. He was talking to a handful of men that he handpicked that was going to turn the world upside down. This was the beginning of the ministry of Christ. You a handful a handful of people are to keep the world from rotting and you are going to keep it from rotting and you're going to bring it to its best light now I don't have time to move into the realm of the light of the world but I want to deal with that salt and that's you and that's me you are the salt of the earth Turn around and look at somebody and say, you're the salt. Now, I believe that Jesus is letting the church know what her function is. And I saw the reality of this when we put that tent up in the South Bronx, where the prostitutes were plying their wares right out on the same street where our tent was. They were selling drugs all around the tent. We are living in a sick 
society. And God has called you. He said, you haven't chosen me, but I have chosen you. And he said, you are going to be that salt that's going to keep society from falling apart. Now, if you look around you, you say, my Lord, Brother Shambach, it's already falling apart. Oh, no, not yet. Now, what we see out there in that world mirrors the church. The church may not want to hear this, but society is sick. It's corrupt, and it's tending to cor corruption. Now, you don't salt something that's living, you salt something that's dead. That it may not be a rotting one. He said, you a few, you have caught of my spirit, of my life, and you I'm going to rub into that rotting mass to keep it from falling to pieces. You are the salt of the earth. Now, when we moved into the Bronx with that tent the first time, I'll never forget this, I was met by the captain of the precinct. And he said, welcome, preacher. I never had a welcome in my life. They generally throw me in jail. But here's a man that said, welcome, the captain of a precinct in the South Bronx. He says, you are putting this tent up in the worst part of the city. He said, we don't even send the police down here. I said, thanks a lot. <laughs> and we had one of the greatest revivals I believe we ever had. In 17 days, we saw computer readout of 20,000 people that came to Christ, drug addicts set free, AIDS victims healed, harlots off the street, were delivered and set free. A week before we left, that captain of that precinct come back, and this is what stirred this message in my heart. He said, Preacher, can you stay another month? He said, Crime has been reduced to zilch since you have been here. There have been no muggings. There have been no shootings. The drug addicts are off the street. There's something about God's people that are the salt of the earth that keeps something from rotting. But many of us in the church, hear me pastors, I'm talking to you now. God put you where you are and if a problem is there, he puts you there because you are salt. Don't move out of the city, stay where you are. Because God has given you the answer to bring deliverance to the people that need help. I'll never forget when we were raising funds for TBN. Mike, I don't know whether you were uh, in, in California at the time, but it's when we went on shortwave radio. And Paul Crouch, and Paul will remember this, Paul said, I want to find out who's listening. Call me, collect from any part in the world. Now that's a miracle to have Paul Crouch say, call me, collect. <laughs> Hi, Paul. And he said, Brother Shambach, we'll pray for you. So I was on the phone. And the first man that called was from Australia. He said, Brother Shambach, I, I, I don't want no prayer. I just want, when he, when he, when he said, you're going to be on the phone, I want to talk to you. He said, last year, you, you had a tent up in the South Bronx. I said, sure did. He said, I was the head of one of the drug cartels in Australia. And I was sent to New York to buy drugs. And he said, I was walking the street, and I heard this crazy loudmouth guy <laughs> over a loudspeaker hollering, Hey! You drug addicts! You pushers, you harlots, come on in here. I 
got your answer. And he said, I fell right into the trap. He never been to a tent meeting. He was sent there to buy drugs. And when he walked under that tent, something captivated him. He heard the word of God preached. The anointing of God came upon him. He ran to the altar and confessed his sin. God knocked him down under the anointing. He got up talking in another tongue. He's telling me this over the telephone, long distance from Australia. God wants you to stay where you are. He never intended for you to run from the devil. If anybody's going to run, the devil's going to run because greater is he that is in you and me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah! He said, they sent me over there to buy drugs, but I brought Jesus back. And he said, I've been preaching ever since. And he said, what a thrill to see people, men and women that I used to uh, deliver drugs to. Now they are saved. I'm witnessing to them and I'm preaching the gospel. Hear me, church. If you want to play church, let them play church. Pastors, I know some of you have two congregations. One part of your congregation wants revival and the other part says nothing doing. We want a little social gathering. Well, let them have it. But I want you to know you can overpower that because God is raising up a people that want revival. They want the anointing of God. They want the power of God. And if other people don't want it, God's going to give a backdoor revival and he's going to bring in the harlots and he's going to bring in the drug addicts. He's going to bring in the alcoholic and God is going to raise up a people to do what he called them to do and they are the salt of the earth hallelujah now jesus is talking to 12 men you're the salt of the earth now we have it in our history books all we got to do is go back and read it this first church was the only church to succeed in doing what God called it to do. They planted that cross on every crossroad of the world. And since then, the church was declining. What happened? The salt lost its savor. How come you're getting quiet on me tonight? This ain't going to make you holler yet. But I want to dig into you a little bit tonight. God is preparing a people for this final harvest. And he's looking for salt. Somebody that has a pungency in their life. Somebody that'll do what God calls them to do and have no fear to eyeball the devil and let him know you've come far enough. Some of you mamas, you've been praying for your children and you've been letting them go, but I want you to know God said he's going to save you and your house and we're living in the day when God's putting families back together again. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Salt is effective in its closeness. God said, I'm going to rub you into that mess out there. That's not very appealing to people. I mean, we want to be the light of the world. We want the exposure on television. We like the bright lights. We want to entertain. But salt is something different. It's unnoticed. You're living with the mess to keep it from corruption. And I don't mind telling you that I would rather be with drug addicts than I would with some church folks. 
Because church folks will criticize you for everything you do. God called you to build that church and a group of deacons want to tell you how to run the thing. It's about time we have a deacon casting out service and do what God called us to do. Can you shout amen? Randy, you're doing it down in Tampa, Florida. Thank God for what he's doing. All over this nation, revival has already started. I was talking to a preacher this afternoon. You know that revival in Pensacola? He said he knows pastors that says it's of the devil. And they haven't even been there. They already put a cloak on them, but 70 some thousand people come through there that gave their hearts to God. Oh, let the dogs bark, the caravan's still moving on. Can you shout amen? Hallelujah. Pastors, evangelists, get ready. We're living in the greatest day. The day of the evangelist is back. The teachers have taken over this thing, but the day of the evangelist is back and preaching is now in vogue and rot parsley. God's using you to spearhead this thing in this last day and we're going to see a revival of old fashioned Holy Ghost preaching of the gospel of Christ that's going to bring multitudes into the kingdom of God. Can you shout praise the Lord? Look at somebody and say, I want to be salt. Thank you, Jesus. How does God rub us into that society to influence it, to impact it? We do it by conduct and character. Now I'm going to go and preach. Through conduct and character. You don't hear much about this. Preachers will stand behind the pulpit and say, just do your thing, honey. It'll all come out in the wash. That lying devil, you'll go to hell along with the preacher. God said, come out from the world and be separated and touch not the unclean thing, and then I'll receive you unto myself. Did he say so? Hallelujah. This is the condition of many churches in America. People have one foot in the world and one foot in the church. They pray like Peter and Paul on Sunday and live like the devil Monday through Saturday. But God is looking for a man. He's looking for a woman who will conduct themselves according to the word of God outside the church just like you are inside the church. Hallelujah! You didn't come to hear it, but I come to preach it. Never forget the camp meeting when you start putting the planks in. Lord, you don't know how I, I preached it right, brother. I stole that from you. Thank God we're all putting them planks back in. Holiness! That song you sang just a while ago, Garrett, holy. Say the word holy. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. I'm not talking about wearing long dresses, but I'm talking about the holiness of the heart, being separated from this, from this world, living what the Word of God tells you to live. You don't live any different what the Word of God declares. Can you shout amen, somebody? It's either holiness or hell. This is going on TBN. TBN is either holiness or hell. Every one of you that are watching this on television, 
I don't care who you are. This ain't no some little church society, but this is Holy Ghost revival. And I want you to know you're either going to get right or you're going to stay wrong and you'll never make heaven your home, but you'll split hell wide open. I made up my mind. You're the salt of the earth by your influence. I didn't see this until we went into the South Bronx. Just the presence of that tent meant something. Oh, you don't know the days I pray for Finney. It's coming. When you hear what God did back in those days, you say, we ain't, getting, we ain't in revival yet. My God, when that man of God preached, he and Whitfield, they closed the bars down. I want to see every bar closed in, in this city. You keep having camp meetings and keep on building what you're building. This is going to be a revival center for the world where preachers can come and get filled with the anointing of God where we, through our conduct, can bring and heap condemnation on the heads of that world that they can't even keep the bars open. It closed the brothels in their day. Well, I want you to know it's coming back and God's kept me alive to see it in this last day. A mighty Holy Ghost move of God that's going to sweep cities into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Conduct. The church is acting like the world. And the world's acting like the church. You can't tell one from the other. I'm only here one night, aren't I? We are living in a sick society. I had preachers come to me. Uh, let me rephrase that. So-called preachers. When they hear me, preachers, when they find out you're living right, they're going to do everything they can to get you to live wrong. And this one, I'll never forget this preacher. He said, Chad Bach, you can drink. Man, we all doing it. I said, you're a lying devil. We ain't all doing it. When I was a sinner, I never did it. I spent three years in the Navy with drunken sailors. I never tasted booze in my life. And now you say that we can do it now? I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. And I'm not going to do what the world's doing. I want to get them out of the mess through our conduct. Hallelujah. Church is forming a picket line. We want prayer back in school. How you gonna get it back in school and you ain't got it in your house? Why don't you pick it to have prayer back in the home? We need to get it back in the home. Can you shout amen? My God, send us a revival of prayer. it been since you spent all night in prayer you know we do we split it up now we form prayer chains four people per hour you take 15 minutes you take 15 you take 15 we split it up and we say we are 24 hour prayer never forget I had a church in Chicago 
And this is when they took the Bible out of the school. But there was a 16-year-old girl in my, in my church. She didn't come to me and ask permission. When the Supreme Court laid down the law and says you can't read the Bible in school, she took her Bible to school. 16 years of age. Dusable High School. That's hit the news. Everybody knows what that school is. Right on the south side of Chicago, all the teachers every morning would have all the students together. And she walked right in, unannounced, walked up on the platform in front of all the teachers and the principal, and she shocked every one of them. They sat there like warts on pickles, <laughs> never moved. And she went right to the microphone, and she said, the Supreme Court just made a law that said we can't read the Bible in school. She said, I'm reading from Matthew's Gospel right now. And she read a whole chapter to all those students. And this is when drugs first began and were prevalent in the school system. And all those guys on drugs saying, hey, man. What kind of stuff is she on? She's not defying a teacher. She's not defying a superintendent of schools, but she's defying the Supreme Court of the United States of America. Newspapers got wind of it. She comes to school the next day. Walks up on the platform. Teachers never stopped her. Went right to the podium. The Supreme Court still says I can't read my Bible in school. So I'm reading from Luke's gospel today. And she read a whole, thank God for women. Thank God for women that are bold, bold enough to stand up and say, I'm not going to knuckle down to the laws of the land, but I'm going to do what God called me to do. They had her on the front page of every paper in Chicago, the Tribune, the Daily News, defying the Supreme Court. We're afraid somebody might see us serve the Lord. God give us boldness. If ever we needed anything in this last day, it's boldness. Boldness to eyeball the devil and say we've had enough of it. Can you shout amen? Yeah. So they called her before the school board. Said you can't do that. She said I've been doing it. So they made a compromise and say we'll give you a classroom all by yourself and you can read the Bible all you want to. She says, can I announce it to the students? The first day she had a thousand students in her class. <laughs> 16 years of age, and all she did was read the Bible. Thousand drug addicts. They come to find out what she's on, man. I want to get some of that stuff. And she told him what she was on. She said, I'm hooked on Jesus. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. I got me a permanent fix. And I tell you, she had a revival breakout in that school. The thousand kids gave their lives to Christ. Some of the teachers come down to find out what was going on, and they got it. Two of the teachers came to my church saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost and fire because of a 16-year-old girl that refused 
to knuckle down to the system. It's about time, hear me. Those homosexuals and those lesbians got more sense in the church. They come out of the closet. It's about time the church comes out of the closet. Let the world know we're not ashamed of this thing. Can you shout amen? They're marching in gay parades, but I want you to know the church is about to come out and the world's going to know that God still has a people that refuses to bow the knee to Baal. Come on, shout amen. All you gotta do is come to camp meeting and you'll know that there's a group of people that refuses to bow their knee to Baal. This is the nucleus of the church. God's gonna have the church and it's about time we let the church be the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've allowed everything to come into the church. You see them sissies on the organ? With her high-heeled shoes and their limp wrists. Not you, Harvey, I know you. Thank God he's still got men, doesn't he? And he still has women. But this is an alternative lifestyle. Lion devil. I was born like this. How in the world can the baby know he even got sex organs? This is the most stupid thing I ever heard. I was born this way. You weren't born. No, no. when God made you, he made you a man. God made you a woman. But the devil has crept in to mess up the creative act of God. You are demon-possessed. I know folks don't want to hear it, but I'm going to say it anyhow. I said you're demon-possessed. Homosexuality is a devil. This is going on television. It's a devil, and God called the church to cast out devils. We love the homosexual, but we want to see you free. We want to see you delivered. Come to the service and let us cast that devil out of you. He'll make a man out of you. He'll make a woman out of you. Hallelujah. God, give us boldness. You are the salt of the earth. Through your conduct through your righteousness. When the church gets excited about who won a Grammy or an Oscar, we in trouble. You all getting quiet on me now? Brother Clendenin, and a dear friend of mine, used to minister with me under the tent. Pastors at church in Beaumont. He happened to be driving by a long line, kids waiting to get in the movie. And he sees two of his own from, from the church. He stopped that car and went over there and said, what you doing in the sign? Get out of there. He, he yanked them out. Brother Clendenin, you embarrassed us in front of all them kids. He said, good, rather do it now. And have you all go to hell? You ain't going to hell. I'm your pastor. It used to be a sin to go to movies. Woo! I was reading an article that a religious organization was holding a convention. During that convention time, there were more X-rated movies purchased than any time in the history of hotel business. 
I'm not talking about a Shriners convention. I'm not talking about the policeman ball. I'm talking about church folks. Something's wrong, folks. Something happened to the soul. It's lost its savor. We need a revival of salt. <laughs> get the salt back in. I'll get that in, in a little while. I, I ain't done yet. That's my introduction. I want to see it come back in. I want to see God move by His Spirit. I want the people of God to live right. Can you shout amen? amen. Did it ever occur to you that we've heard more about adultery in the past month concerning our own armed forces that we never hear about in church? I'm sure glad I don't know you. So that means I can preach it. This year I'm celebrating the 49th year with my wife. My wife. I'm still in love with that girl. She's still the best looking woman in the world. And she thinks I'm the best looking dude in the world. Just don't tell her any different. Hallelujah! But the church, you know why all that, you know that it's over 50% now, marriages end in divorce. Same percentage in the church. You are the soul. And that church is pointing her finger. That world's pointing her finger at the church. If they can do it, I can do it. I was riding an airplane from Los Angeles to Philadelphia. And I was seated next to a Olympic sportscaster. If I mentioned his name, you know who I was talking about. Now I always get the aisle seat. Because I don't like to let anybody out when I'm starting to talk to them. <laughs> They're locked in for the trip. This young man came in. He wanted to be friendly. He said, what's your line? I said, I ain't got no line. <laughs> well, what, what's, uh, what's your business? I said, the greatest business in the world. He said, what do you do? I said, I'm a Holy Ghost Pentecostal evangelist. I talk in tongues and I'm not ashamed of it. God, give me more boldness. He backed up in that seat and said, Aren't you ashamed to call yourself an evangelist? I said, no, sir, brother, I'm proud of it. He said, after we all heard about these evangelists, oh, I said, no, back off. Are you in the sports world, right? I, I said, what about Pete Rose? What about Michael Irvin? And I started going down that sports list because I've read it. I, I've, you've seen it in the paper. He said, all right, you made your point. I said, what about newscaster? You. I said, are you a homosexual? He said, no, I'm not. But I said, I've seen some on television. Now I said, let me tell you something. I said, Jesus hand-picked 11, 12 disciples. He hand-picked 12 of them, and only one of them was a devil. 
Now, I said the 11 of them went out and turned the world upside down. And I said, all you news people do is zero in on those that have fallen. But I said, I want you to know for everyone that's fallen, God has 11 good ones out there that are saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. Come out, shout amen. And I don't mind telling you, I looked him right in his eyes and I said, you're talking to one of the good ones. I'm doing what God called me to do. I've got my same wife I had. And I want you to know I don't drink booze like you all do. He said, I think we'll move. I said, no, you ain't. We're going to have a chat the whole way to Philadelphia. <laughs> Conduct and righteousness. Rubs us in with that world out there. We're in the world, but we're not of it. Went into the bank. Banker must have heard me on television talking about what's coming. Hell's going to break loose. I went in there shouting, praising the Lord like I generally do. We all do, always do that when you make a deposit. You weep when you make a withdrawal. <laughs> and he said, how come you can be so happy? You're talking about the condition this world's in. I said, I ain't talking about my world. I'm talking about your world. I said, ain't nothing wrong with my world. I said, I've been talking to you about your world. I said, if I wasn't saved, I believe I'd get saved quick. Because we're on the verge of one of the greatest exploitations that the devil has ever done. Are you listening to me? The Bible says, him that is filthy, let him stay filthy. And he that is holy, let him stay holy. We don't have long, folks. Jesus is coming. He's going to get us out of here. And I'm ready to leave and give this world a permanent way. Can you raise your hands and shout, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You ready to go? Yeah. You don't have anything to go home for, do you? Turn around and tell three people, say, I'm ready to get out of here. Not camp meeting, but I'm talking about this old world. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Many of us will have to come to the conclusion that we've lost our saltness. And when you lose your saltness, is it possible to get it back? The salt and the masses, the church and the world, Either you are preserving that world from stench or that world is contaminating you and taking the saltness out of you. It's one or the other. You're either hot in revival or you're cold. One or the other. I'm not here to judge you. I want you to judge yourself. Do you have more today than you had when you got saved? Thank God for camp meetings like this. But I talk to Christians and say, well, I, I don't have time to go to no camp meeting. But they got time to take boat rides around the world. They're afraid if they come to a camp meeting, they're going to be asked to give a thousand dollars.
Thank God we have the opportunity. There was a time when you didn't have it. Aren't you glad you got it where you can give it? Thank you, Jesus. Revival fires are burning. People are having fellowship with Jesus like they've never had before. Can you re-salt? Salt the salt. If the church is meant for purifying the world and the church itself needs purifying, is there any power in the world that will do it? And I've come to tell you there is no obstacle in the way of any penitent who will come back. In that word of God, you'll find, and I could preach all night on Samson. He came back. Samson had the Nazarite vow on his head. Born of a woman who had no children, the angel told her, you're going to have a son. And he's going to do exploits. He's going to be mighty with me. But I want you to raise him as a Nazarite. No strong drink. Don't let him cut his hair. He wouldn't be allowed in some churches today. <laughs> Especially if he had long hair. But Samson had supernatural strength. He slayed a thousand Philistines with a jawbone of an ass. It says the Spirit came upon him mightily. Oh, God, that's what I want. When you first read about Samson, it says the Spirit came upon him at times. The Holy Spirit's like that. He wants you to try out your wings. He called you to heal the sick and cast out devils. He'll send those with colds first. Those that have the flu. Those headaches. Then before long, the faith graduates. And you'll start laying hands on the cripple. You won't take them behind the platform. You'll bring them out on the front. And you'll lay hands on them and see the work of God being demonstrated. Are you listening to me? It's about time we demonstrate this gospel, folks. Samson, he lost it. All because of his love for a woman. A woman he had no business having. How come y'all getting quiet on me? Y'all shouting and jumping around here earlier? I brought my two-edged sword tonight. I come to cut. Somebody says, when are you going to pour in the oil and the wine when I get them cut? I've got to cut them first before I can pull in that, pour in that wine and that oil. The devil is trying to reduce you to be an ordinary man. Now, you see, the devil knows who you are. Oh, yes, he does. I'll never forget when I was with Brother Allen. I was preaching the afternoon service. They brought a woman in in a big black limousine. 
from the mental institution, insane, couldn't keep clothes on her, they had her wrapped in blankets. Brother Allen said to me, Shamba, come with me. I want you to help me cast this devil out. I said, well, let me go get things started first. I'll get somebody to lead the singing. And I went out to that limousine and I tried to get in where he was on that side. He had it blocked up, so I went on the other side. And as I went in, getting ready to lay my hands on her, she opened her mouth and the devil spoke and said, Oh, you need Shambox help. <laughs> Brother Allen said, You know that woman? I said, That ain't her talking. And he started laughing and said, Shambach, the devil knows who you are. <laughs> Woo! I shouted all around that car. I remember when the devil said to the sons of Sceva, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, but who are you? Every one of you are spirit-filled. The devil knows who you are. Are you listening to me? And he knows when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you've got power over the devil. You can get him off your back. You can get him out of your chest. You can get him out of your legs. You can get him out of your feet. You can get him out of your family. You can get him out of your pocketbook. And you can put him where it belongs, under your feet. Your elder brother destroyed him 2,000 years ago. And he's given us power over all the power of that devil. Hallelujah. Sit down, I ain't done. Can you re-salt? Salt the salt. Gee, you don't lose it all at once. The Philistines were stalking him. The devil's stalking you. He's a thief that comes to steal, to kill and destroy. If I could just find the secret of his strength, what makes him more powerful than we are? They were following him around. This night they followed him to a harlot's house. That don't sound good in church, does it? It's in the Bible. And the Philistines were all outside. Let's wait till he gets done. His strength will be gone, sure enough. <laughs> they waited till midnight. And Samson came out and grabbed the gates of the city, weighing 2,400 pounds, and put them on his shoulder and walked 26 miles up. Philistine said, we ain't going to bother him tonight. <laughs> they tried to find out the secret of his strength. You see, you don't lose it all at once. But they found his weakness. Hey! hey. Those high lords of the Philistines found the most beautiful woman they could get a hold of. His problem was women. And some of you women, your problem is men. I know you didn't come to hear it. They came to Delilah. Even the name sounds sinful. <laughs> Delilah. <laughs> Delilah! Find the secret of his strength. And each one of us will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. She said, get your money ready, boy. <laughs> and he fell.
fell into the trap. Didn't lose it all at once. Lying in her lap, stroking his long locks. Do you love me, Samson? You know I do, baby. I'm bringing it close to home now so you can understand. What makes you stronger than anybody else? What is it, Samson? And he told her three lies. Isn't that just like a man? <laughs> Now, don't get too blessed by saying that. <laughs> Told her three lies. A man of God with a spirit upon him, lying. But women, how don't get, how, how, they know how to get next to you. <laughs> Delilah said, Samson. You lied to me three times, man. Now, if you really did love me, you'd tell me the secret of your strength. She got him. She got him. He said, all right, I'll tell you. Nobody knew this. But the enemy will keep after you. He'll dog you. to reduce you to be another church member. Just playing church. Having your deacons meetings. Telling the preacher what to preach and what he can do and can't do. Are you listening? And he told her all of his heart. He said, I'm under the Nazarite vow. My mama raised me right. I was a gift of God. There's never been a razor to my hair. You cut my hair, and I'll become an ordinary man. My God have mercy. And she knew it. Deep sleep fell on him. She called for the barber. She called for the high lords of the Philistines. Bring the silver. I got him. The choice man of God. Think about it. And they come in and cut his hair. It's all laying around. She awakened Samson. She said, Samson? Samson? The Philistines are upon you! And he awakened and saw his hair. He said, I will arise, and I'll shake myself. He had the shaken fake religion. <laughs> Pentecostal people can hide this better than the Baptists. I'm on you Pentecostal folks now. They can hide it better than the Methodists. That's all the Pentecostal people got to do is put a religious act on and go, mm, mama, mama, ha! <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, I will arise and shake myself like I did other times.
I ain't mad for 72, bro. You know the sad thing? He didn't know. He didn't know that the Spirit of the Lord departed from him. This is the saddest story in the Bible. I like to preach this to young preachers. Because when you get on fire for God, the devil will do everything he can to rob you of that power and that anointing that you have. Rod's a young man, but I pray for him a lot. God's raised him up for something in this last day. I believe this. And some of you young preachers, if you ever needed to be alert, it's today. The first thing they did was stripped him of his strength. He was an ordinary human now. Just a regular church man. Goes to church three times a week, pays his time. No power. Ordinary church man now. Didn't know the spirits departed. And then they burned out his eyes. Cecil B. DeMille captured it. Burned his eyes out of the socket. Took him to the prison house and tied him up to the wheel. Twenty-four hours a day, going around in circles. A man that slew a thousand Philistines with a jawbone of an ass. A man who slew a lion with his bare hands had nothing in his hands. He had power with God. And now he's grinding. Grinding corn at the wine press. Blind, can't see, no eyes. They're singing praises to Dagon, the false god, the Philistines. They're praising Dagon for delivering Samson into their hands. Now they're all assembled together in the Colosseum. Bring us Samson to make sport. Not enough to blind him. It's not enough to take his strength. It's not enough to tie him up to a wheel. Now we want him to make sport. And as I've studied this, this is the modus operandi of the devil. The first thing that he's out to destroy is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. <laughs> Hear me. This is one thing here in this camp meeting that sets it apart from any other camp meeting. That's the manifestation of joy. Oh, hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Don't you let anybody steal your joy. I established four churches, and I told every one of them in Philadelphia and Chicago and New York and in Newark, New Jersey, I said, if I can't shout in this church, keep the church. I'll go outside and shout. I refuse to let the devil steal my joy. Don't you let any devil steal your joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. That's the first thing. If he can get your strength, and then he'll gouge your eyes out. You won't be able to see truth. 
You won't be able to see anything that's going on in your life or anybody else's. Everything goes. Play in church because you can't see anyway. And then he ties you up and puts you in bondage as you've gone around in circles now. You used to be free. You used to go out devil hunting. But now he's tied up to a wheel. You used to have anointing services. Heal the sick. And cast out devils. I'm bringing it close to home now. And now he's going around in circles. Playing church. Sunday school. Sunday night service. Well, now some churches don't have that anymore. Wednesday night women's meet. Sunday morning, Sunday school. Going around in circles playing the game. Midweek service. No joy, just playing the game. I'm getting dizzy, I better go the other way for a while. <laughs> he lost it. Now they're asking to make sport. You don't know how many people walk by the church and laugh at it. Bingo. Win $1,000. In the church. Gambling's against the law. It's all right if it's done by the church. I'm coming. I was down in Cape May with my wife, New Jersey. And right in front of the church, the priest is out there with his collar on backwards, selling raffles for the car. I said, Lord, I'm going to have a ball with this. I said, how much of them tickets? Dollar. You going to give me that car for a dollar? No, I can't give you the car. I said, what are you supposed to do with it? He says, we raffled it off. Oh, I said, you gamble. Well, no, it ain't gambling. I said, well, what is it? Is everybody going to win? No, well, it, it's a donation you're making. I said, I ain't making no donation. I want the car. I said, you're a man of God, and you're out here doing this? He packed that suitcase and moved out of there. If I had the keys, I'd have taken the car. But this is what the devil wants to do. He wants to make a spectacle out of you. To hold you up in front of everybody and ridicule. And they started calling, bring us Samson! Let him make sport for us! What they didn't know was, his hair was growing back. I'm trying to tell you there's a way back. You can re-salt, saltless salt. This man came back. And as they led him out to that arena, led him to the pillars, he said to that little boy that had him by the hand, he said, son, lead me to the two pillars that hold this thing up. And then when you lead me and direct me there, he said, get out of here run out and he stood there one arm around one pillar one arm around another oh lord oh god let me feel your power just one more time please oh god Avenge me for my eyes and let me feel your power. And 
all of a sudden he felt strength coming into every muscle in his body <laughs> hear me saints if you've ever felt the anointing of the Holy Ghost in your life there's nothing can take it place you'll never be happy in mediocrity you'll never be happy in a cold dead church once you get into a camp meeting like this you'll never be the same again you're going to have to make sure you have a church where the joy of the Lord is manifested where the power of God is demonstrated it's time to get the salt back let me feel your power just one more time all of a sudden he felt oh somebody asked me one time what is the anointing I said don't know what it is but I know when it ain't good definition of it and he felt the muscle strengthening in his legs in his arms and he felt that power one more time he said Lord I'm not asking you to let me live let me die with the rest of them and all of a sudden he bent his knees and when he did the pillars bent and cracked and tore it down until 3,000 people died the Bible said he killed more in his death than he did in his life Samson came back I said Samson came back oh hallelujah I said hallelujah he came back I don't care who you are don't care how far you've gone you can come back I'm not here to dwell on sins of others but all I can say is and this TV camera's still on Ted Koppel keep your mouth off of the church Peter Jennings, keep your mouth off of the church. Larry King Live, keep your mouth off of the church. That world has no business judging the church, but God has his church that's going to judge this world. There's a lot of us have been failures, but we've come back. And I'm praying for those that have fallen, but they're coming back just like Samson came back I don't care what you've done there is a way back you can re-salt salt to salt and I want you to know you can feel that power just one more time we're living in the hour of revival it's time to reap a harvest the fields are right God soliciting you in this last day you want him to use you I want him to use me in a greater way in this last day than he's ever done before stand with me everybody I'm not done but I quit while you stand there bow your heads with me Father, I thank you for bringing me back. There is a way back. Nothing can take the place of your anointing. That anointing destroys the yoke. If you're watching this on television, I believe God's dealing with your heart. You can hide it from your pastor. You can hide it from your loved ones, but you can't hide it from God.
Do you have that anointing on your life that you once had? Or has it become saltless? While you stand there, you feel that you, you want God to give you that power in a double portion fashion for this last day of revival. Jump out of your seat and come down here and stand with me. I don't care who you are, we're gonna pray. I want to feel his power one more time. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I'm coming. Lord, I'm coming. Lord, Lord, let me feel your power. Just one more time. Yes, I'm coming. Never, 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 never more. devil don't know what he's in for I said that devil don't know what he's in for I'm gonna have everything God promised to me and I'm gonna pay the price hallelujah I want to see corruption done away with out in that world I want to see it done away with in the church I want to see it done away with in my life I want to be with my conduct to demonstrate the gospel of Christ to an undying, an undying world. You want God to use you. Now, I didn't give an altar call. I'm just, I feel led of God to just to pray for every one of you. This is what you come to camp meeting for. I refuse to go home the same way I came. <laughs> Hallelujah, I refuse to go home the same way I came, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 oh,
ready for the greater works, aren't you? The latter day of this house is going to be greater than the former. That's God's promise to every one of us. And I want his best. You willing to pay the price for it? There's some friends you're going to have to drop. Some places you're going to have to stop going to some things you're going to have to stop doing. He's a jealous God. He wants you all for himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody in the whole building, raise your right hand. Come here, Brother Parsley, with me if you will. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. I say it from my own heart. I want it to come out of your heart. Everybody say, Father. In Jesus' name, I repent of all my sin. I want to get rid of all of it. I have a desire, a greater desire, to have your best. In this final hour, when we're going to reap this harvest, you said the laborers are few. Lord, you can count on me. I made up my mind. I'm going to be obedient to the heavenly command. But I need more power. I need a double portion. Give it to me tonight. Use me to do the works of God. Lord, as sickness stands before me, give me boldness to confront it. When demons stand before me, give me boldness to confront them. You've given us power. Teach us how to put it to work. That's what we're here for in camp meeting. I claim my city. I claim my family. I claim my church. In the name of Jesus, we're going to do what you commanded us to do. You foul devil, get back where you belong, under our feet. Our elder brother destroyed you. His name is Jesus. He rendered you powerless and helpless. And we enforce it tonight in the name of Jesus. We have more power than you have. We're going to put it to work. Get thee hence, Satan. In Jesus' name. Put your hands up and receive a double portion now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is it, folks. In my spirit, that first step you took to come forward, God's already given it to you. Be bold. I said be bold. That devil's bold. It's time for us to confront him in every way. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Remember, it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. Not breaks it, but destroys it. Don't forget to stay in the Word of God. Spend time on your face before God. This is where the power comes. Let me just tell you one thing. When I left Brother Allen, I'll never forget this in Chicago. I love to lay hands on people. I laid hands on thousands of people every night. A lot of times I'd go home drenched, weak. I'd preach the afternoon service and the night service. Is that a burden for people? But I didn't have time to pray. It's an awful thing to confess. I was too busy laying hands on folks. Sometimes I go home at night, wouldn't even take my clothes off. I just get on the bed and say, I see you tomorrow. You ever done that? We've all had an apple out of that say. God left me get by with that for three nights. And that third night around three o'clock in the morning, a bright light came into my room, waking me out of a dead sleep. You don't know how I appreciate this. He loved me so much that he made a personal visit to me in that hotel room in Chicago. I took my daughter by that hotel. Last time we were there and I said, there's the hotel, room 214. She hears me tell the story. Three o'clock in the morning, I didn't see him, but I heard his voice. He said, son, thank God he still called me son. He said, you're spending too much time with the people and not enough time with me. And I willing to justify myself. I said, Lord, that's what you called me to do. I have a responsibility for those people I preach to. He said, true. But he said, before you fulfill an obligation to your family or to people, you fulfill an obligation to me because he said this and i'll never forget it remember this without me you can do nothing and i put that on you tonight sometimes we get to a point when we think we're doing it. we forget it's derived power something that he's invested in us we're the temple of God but we've got to stay charged up and there's only one way to do it and that's through prayer be determined you're going to have it you're going home a different person a double portion of his spirit hallelujah when you get home tackle those impossible cases don't be ashamed, lay your hands on them. Say, you devil, you come far enough. And I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And do what God called you to do. Turn around and tell three people, say, I'm going home a brand new man. Going home a brand new woman. I'm going home brand new. 
Stay here a minute. Stay right here. Come here, Brother Parsley. Every one of us owe this man a debt of gratitude by doing what he's doing, having a camp meeting here. I'd just like to throw my, my weight and that money that was raised for that new building. I like what you're calling it. It's going to be a revival center for young preachers, students, old worn out pastors, old worn out evangelists, where we can come and get revived. That's what it's all about. And I'd like to challenge every one of you, if you were not one of those that gave $1,000, before you leave here, you fill out one of them blue slips. I believe we can raise that $5 million here this week. Amen. Will somebody say hey, man? Yeah. I believe God can do anything we can believe him for. Yeah. For the partially Greek folks, will you? Have you enjoyed Brother Shambach? Go back there and sit down. I never heard him preach better. I never heard him preach better. And my God, how we need it. I don't want anyone leaving this building dishonoring this ministry gift and the anointing of the Holy Spirit which has rested so mightily and beautifully upon him. He has given us a word tonight. And we're thankful. He saved a lot of preachers tonight. He rescued a lot of folks that the devil would have destroyed had they not heard that message. I want everyone to be seated. Those of you at the altar, return to your seat. And the reason I'm sending you to your seat is because we want to honor this man of God and his ministry. I want to help him get to... You know, I don't know anybody, Brother Shambach, brave enough to go the places he goes. And it takes a supernatural anointing and supernatural gifting and supernatural calling to go into those places and shine the light where there's only darkness. And I'm going to say this tonight. I don't know what you would give to hear an Amy Simple McPherson preach again. I don't know what you'd pay to hear A.A. A. Allen come storming across a pulpit and casting out devils again. But I'm thankful that we've still got our W. Shambach with us. And your Bible says, give honor where honor is due and double honor to them that minister to you the things of God. I want you to honor this man of God tonight. We want to bless Brother Shambach. I want you to get out your wallet, your checkbook. There are envelopes in the pew in front of you. We're going to bless his ministry. Help him. We're going to help him go to Fort Apache going to help him go to Long Island, going to help him go to Chicago. I want to send him. I want to send him. In Jesus' name. So get out a pleasing offering that will bless the servant of the Lord. While you're doing that, tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock is always one of the greatest services of camp meeting. She's the only person around here that receives more invitations to preach than I do. Some folks say, well, I see where the kid got it after I hear his mama. But she didn't start preaching until about five years ago. I'd been preaching 15 years before she picked up a microphone. I just want to set that straight. And she raised me to know the Lord. Some of the greatest camp meetings in this country. She's a guest speaker. Blesses folks around the world. My mother's going to be preaching. She's got an illust let me tell you something. She's got an illustrated sermon in here tomorrow morning. She's going to strip the clothes off dead man Lazarus tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock in this building. You better get in here and get some of that. Then at 2 o'clock, one of the greatest blessings in North America, Brother Kyle Switzer is going to preach for you in this house always one of the freshest words we receive at camp meeting you are not tired 
That's the devil. Some of you, I ain't seen it. I've been here again since 7 o'clock this morning. Some of you, I ain't seen since last night. Some of you have been laying around over there in that hotel resting all day, and you looked about halfway through Brother Shambach's sermon. You saw you, saw you nodding off. Brother, you need a dose of the Holy Ghost. Drink a whole lot of Coca-Cola or something. Hallelujah. This is camp meeting. That means camp meeting. Camp meeting. Are you ready to bless God's servant? I said, are you ready to bless God's servant? Then tomorrow night, God willing, I'm going to preach the sequel to No Dry Season, the sermon that the Lord's laid on my heart called No More Crumbs. I want you to be here for that. And the Martins are going to join us tomorrow. And if you, how many of you have never been in a service with the, with the Martins? You've never? Oh, my Jesus. Well, just get here. It'll bless you. Donnie, are you going to be here tomorrow night? You're going to? Are you? All the way through. you just coming to camp. And Gary, you're going to be here all the way through. They're going to help me. They're going to help me in the Breakthrough Partners Only Anointing Service. They're expecting between five and 6,000 partners to be in here, and I'm going to lay hands on every single one of them. I'm going to start at 10 o'clock in the morning, and if it goes to 7 o'clock, we'll just be ready when Brother Benny gets here, won't we? Hallelujah. He'll be here Friday night. Our Criflo Dollar will be here on Thursday night. Don't miss that. Don't miss a single service. Hallelujah. You got your offering ready? Praise the Lord. The ushers are coming. Lord, bless this offering. Bless your servant. You promised him double, and I just receive it in the name of the Lord to bless him. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to give us unto the Lord. I want you to stay where you are until these ushers have finished, and then I'll dismiss you. Praise the Lord. We got the hot dogs waiting. They'll still be there. Just hold on. Hallelujah. Who's going to sing? Somebody's going to sing. Are you going to sing, Gary? You a singing wild man. I want to learn to do that. Come on, Billy. Ain't nothing to it. Can't do it. You got it. I'm too white. If I had sideburns, I could do it. I want to testify. I got the victory. I want to testify. I got the victory. Oh, oh. I want to testify. I got the victory. I am what I am by the blood of the Lamb. I'm a conqueror in Jesus Christ, my King. I want to testify. I got the victory. I'm going to testify. I got the victory. I want to testify. I got Brother Shambach wanted me to remind you that he forgot to say anything about his book and tape table. It's in the main foyer out here. Make sure you stop by there and get some good Shambach preaching. It'll be a blessing to you. We'll see you in the morning at 10 o'clock. The food tent's open. Enjoy yourself. We'll see you in the morning. I'm
Yeah, the victory comes to the justified.